Hello, and welcome back to my water wheel project. In this episode, I begin working on the wheel itself. Before I did anything, I wrote a small bit of code to optimise the design of the flume and the wheel, given the head I had available. This gave me the dimensions I required to build the flume and wheel. Using these dimensions, I modelled the wheel in CAD. I decided to use sheet aluminium and join all the pieces with right angle brackets and rivets. The reasons behind all the design and material decisions are quite extensive. If you are interested in the maths and engineering design behind the water wheel, leave a comment down below. If there is enough interest, I will make a video going into the details. Anyway, back to the build. I sent the computer files to a laser cutting company, and in a couple of weeks, the perfect cut pieces arrived. I really recommend getting multiple quotes if you want to get some laser cutting done. The range in prices amazed me. As I'm sure you are all interested, all the laser cut parts cost under £400, but another company quoted me over £700. However, before I could start building the actual wheel, I needed to make the brackets, which would connect all the parts together. To prevent galvanic corrosion, I wanted to use aluminium, but could not find cheap aluminium brackets. Therefore, I decided to make them out of aluminium angle. This was by far the most tedious job of the whole project. If possible, it would be much better to buy them or get them made. I needed over 300, and so this took me quite a while. Each bracket needed two holes marking, drilling, countersinking, both sides, cutting and then deburring. Accuracy was also important because every hole had to line up with the laser cut holes. Seriously, if anyone does this again, get them made.
Once all the brackets were made, I moved on to prepare the hubs. The way I ended up connecting the wheel to the shaft was by using compression hubs from a company called Fenner Drives. These little hubs clamp onto the sheet metal hubs and the shaft simultaneously. At this point I wasn't decided on how I was going to achieve the gearing and these compression hubs would allow all the torque to be put through the shaft without slipping. Unfortunately, these were one of the few parts which I couldn't get in stainless or aluminium. And so, in order to at least prevent galvanic corrosion, I decided to use painted steel for the hubs. I had four discs made, with which I would sandwich the spokes between. To make the paint stick better, I roughed up and cleaned the surface, and also knocked off any sharp edges with a countersink and a file. They were first coated with an anti-rust primer, and then later were coated with thick black garage door paint. I think that's enough now. A bit more talking than usual, but hopefully it was informative. Come back for the next episode where I will be showing how I assembled the water wheel segments. Thanks for watching.